Hi everybody, welcome back. Whimsy Metals here. Welcome back to my channel. And on this episode of Geology Rocks, I thought I would talk to you guys about some really big shits. <laughs> That's right, I said it. Shits. Of course, I am speaking metamorphically. And the correct spelling of this word is S-C-H-I-S-T. <laughs> And of course, I do mean that I will be speaking about metamorphic rocks in this video. So keep watching. And as always, Geology Rocks! Yay! What are metamorphic rocks? Metamorphic rocks start out as some other type of rock but have been substantially changed from their original igneous, sedimentary, or earlier metamorphic form. Metamorphic rocks form when rocks are subjected to high heat, high pressure, hot mineral-rich fluids, or, more commonly, some combination of these factors. Conditions like these are found deep within the earth or where tectonic plates meet. The process of metamorphism does not melt the rocks, but instead transforms them into denser, more compact rocks. New minerals are created either by rearrangement of mineral components or by reactions with fluids that enter the rocks. Pressure or temperature can even change previously metamorphous rocks into new types. Metamorphic rocks are often squished, smeared out, and folded. Despite these uncomfortable conditions, metamorphic rocks do not get hot enough to melt, or they would become igneous rocks. Common metamorphic rocks include phyllite, schist, gneiss, quartzite, and marble. Let's take a look at some metamorphic rocks. Amphibolite. Amphibolite is a rock composed mostly of amphibole minerals. Usually, it's a hornblende schist. Amphibolite forms when basaltic rock is subjected to higher temperatures between 550 Celsius and 750 Celsius, and a slightly greater pressure range than that which yields green schist. Amphibolite is also the name of metamorphic fossils a set of minerals that typically forms at a specific range of temperature and pressure. Argillite. This is a rock name to remember when you find a hard, nondescript rock that looks like it could be slate but doesn't have slate's trademark cleavage. Argillite is a low-grade metamorphized claystone that was subjected to mild heat and pressure without strong directionality. Argillite does have a glamorous side that slate can't match. It is also known as pipestone when it lends itself to carving. The American Indians favored it for tobacco pipes and other small ceremonial or decorative objects. Blue schist. Blue schist signifies regional metamorphism at relatively high pressures and low temperatures, but it isn't always blue or even a schist. High pressure, low temperature conditions are most typical of subduction, where marine crusts and sediments are carried beneath a continental plate and needed by changing tectonic motions, like sodium-rich fluids marinate the rocks. Blue schist is a schist because all traces of original structure in the rock have been wiped out along with the original minerals, and a strongly layered fabric has been imposed. Cataclasite is a fine grain brithia produced by grinding rocks into fine particles or cataclases. This is a microscopic thin section. Eclogite. Eclogite is an extreme metamorphic rock formed by original metamorphism of basalt under very high pressures and temperatures. This type of metamorphic rock is the name of highest gray metamorphic facies. Nice. Nice is a rock of great variety with large mineral grains arranged in wide bands. It means a type of rock texture, not a composition. 
This type of metamorphic was created by regional metamorphism, in which a sedimentary or igneous rock has been deeply buried and subjected to high temperatures and pressures. Green schist. Green schist forms by regional metamorphism under conditions of high pressure and fairly low temperature. It isn't always green or even a schist. Green schist is the name of metamorphic facies, a set of typical minerals that form under specific conditions. In this case, relatively cool temperatures at high pressures. Greenstone Greenstone is a tough, dark, altered basaltic rock that once was solid deep sea lava. It belongs to the green schist regional metamorphic facies. In greenstone, the olivine and peridotite that made up the fresh basalt have been metamorphosed by high pressure and warm fluids into green minerals. Hornfels Hornfels is a tough, fine-grained rock that is made by contact metamorphism where magna bakes and recrystallizes the surrounding rocks. Marble Marble is made by regional metamorphism of limestone or dolomite rock, causing their microscopic grains to combine into larger crystals. This type of metamorphic rock consists of recrystallized calcite in limestone or dolomite in dolomite rock. For fine marble of the sort used in buildings and sculpture, the crystals are even smaller. The color of marble can range from the purest white to black, ranging to the warmer colors in between, depending on the other mineral impurities. Migmatite Migmatite is the same material as gneiss, but brought close to melting by original metamorphism so that the veins and layers of minerals became warped and mixed. This type of metamorphic rock has been buried very deep and squeezed very hard. In many cases, the darker part of this rock, consisting of biotite mica and hornblende, has been intruded by veins of lighter rock consisting of quartz and feldspar. With its curling light and dark veins, magmatite can be very picturesque. Yet even with this extreme degree of metamorphism, the minerals have arranged layers and the rock is clearly classified as metamorphic. Mylonite Mylonite forms along deeply buried fault surface by crushing and stretching of rocks under such heat and pressure that the minerals deform plastic way. Phyllite Phyllite is one step beyond slate in the chain of original metamorphism. Unlike slate, phyllite has a definite sheen. The name phyllite is from scientific Latin and means leaf stone. It's typically a medium gray or greenish stone, but here sunlight reflects off its finely wavy face. Whereas slate has a dull surface because its metamorphic minerals are extremely fine grain, phyllite has a sheen from tiny grains of sericitic mica, graphite, chlorite, and similar minerals. With further heat and pressure, the reflective grains grow more abundant and join each other. And where a slate usually breaks in very flat sheets, phyllite tends to have a corrugated cleavage. Quartzite Quartzite is a tough stone composed mostly of quartz. It may be derived from sandstone, are from chert by regional metamorphism. This metamorphic rock forms in two different ways. In the first way, sandstone or chert recrystallizes, resulting in a metamorphic rock under the pressures and temperatures of deep burial. A quartzite in which all traces of the original grains and sedimentary structures are erased may also be called metaquartzite. The second method in which it forms involves sandstone at low pressures and temperatures, where circulating fluids fill the spaces between sand grains with silica cement. This kind of quartzite, also called orthoquartzite, is considered a sedimentary rock 
not a metamorphic rock, because the original mineral grains are still there, and bedding planes and other sedimentary structures are still evident. The traditional way to distinguish quartzite from sandstone is by viewing quartzite's fractures across or through the grains, sandstone schist. Schist is formed by regional metamorphism and has schistose fabric. It has coarse mineral grains and is fizzle, splitting into thin layers. Schist is a metamorphic rock that comes in almost infinite variety, but its main characteristic is hinted in its name. Schist comes from the ancient Greek for split, through Latin and French. It is formed by dynamic metamorphism at high temperatures and high pressures that aligns the grains of mica, hornblende, and other flat or elongated minerals into thin layers or foliation. At least 50% of the mineral grains in schist are aligned this way. Less than 50% makes it nice. Serpentine Serpentine is composed of minerals of the serpentine group. It forms by regional metamorphism of deep sea rocks from the oceanic mantle. It is common beneath the oceanic crust where it forms by the alternation of the mantle rock periodotite. It is seldom seen on land except in rocks from subduction zones where oceanic rocks may be preserved. Most people call it serpentine or serpentine rock. A serpentine is a set of minerals that make up serpentinite. It gets its name from its resemblance to snake skin with a mottled color. Waxy or resinous luster and curving, polished surfaces. This type of metamorphic rock is low in plant nutrients and high in toxic metals. Slate Slate is a low gray metamorphic rock with a dull luster and strong cleavage. It is derived from shell by regional metamorphism. Slate forms when shell, which consists of clay minerals, is put under pressure with temperatures of a few hundred degrees or so. Then the clays begin to revert to the mica minerals from which they formed. This does two things. First, the rock grows hard enough to ring or tink under the hammer. Second, the rock gets a pronounced cleavage direction so that it breaks along flat planes. Slatty cleavage is not always in the same direction as the original sedimentary bedding planes. Thus, any fossils originally in the rock are usually erased, but sometimes they survive in smeared or stretched form. With further metamorphism, slate turns to phyllite, then to schist or gneiss. Slate is usually dark, but it can be colorful too. High quality slate is an excellent paving stone, as well as a material of long lasting slate roof tiles, and of course, the best biller tables. Blackboards and handheld writing tablets were once made of slate, and the name of the rock has become the name of tablets themselves. Soapstone Soapstone consists largely of the mineral talc, with or without other metamorphic minerals, and it is derived from hydrothermal alteration of periodotite and related ultramafic rocks. Harder examples are suitable for making carved objects. Soapstone kitchen counters or tabletops are highly resistant to stains and cracking. Now let's take a look at some really pretty metamorphic rocks, some you may recognize. So I want to thank you again for joining me on this episode of Geology Rocks and I hope you learned something new. If you would like to send me pictures of your crystals or rocks, you may do so at my gmail address gardnerwimsy at gmail.com and I would love to put them in my next video. You have until the deadline is May 10th if you would like to submit. And of course until next time people, 
I love you guys. You're my most precious jewels. And I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye. And don't forget, Geology Rocks!